This video is the last of four which discusses how to design a house to be as flood resistant as possible. Part 4 focuses on how to design your house to survive being partly submerged. Hi, I'm Daniel of Daniel Clark Architect. This is the last of my four-part mini-series on designing a house to be as floodproof as possible. This is of interest to anybody designing a new house or remodeling an existing house. In part three, I looked at the different strategies you can use both on the landscaping around your house and on the house itself to prevent the water from making its way in. In this last video, I'm going to look at what you can do, how you can best prepare your house for if the water does make it inside. These strategies collectively are referred to as wet flood proofing. It's not actually flood proofing at all, but it's designing your house to survive being partly submerged. Assume that the bottom portion portion of your house is going to be submerged, if at all possible. First, avoid having a basement. Two thirds of the people who died in New York during Hurricane Ida died because they were in basement suites that got flooded out and they couldn't safely exit the space. Next, you need to prioritize what's most important and move that higher up in the house. You don't need to design a stilt house as you'd find in traditional Asian architecture, but you do need to consider that ground floor as sacrificial. Design it as a garage, as an open lounge area. Avoid having interior partitions, and this is to allow water that's moved into the space safely move back out without this area being cluttered with debris that was in that receding water. Don't use stud walls. Metal studs or wood studs, it doesn't matter. And whether or not there's insulation, the spaces between those studs are little reservoirs that will trap water and interfere with those walls drying out. So instead, use concrete or concrete block or structural brick or even mass timber such as CLT panels, cross laminated timber. Something solid that won't absorb and trap all of that water. Next, take a look at your electrical, your outlets and your switches. Keep them as high as possible. Five feet is a pretty good elevation. That's pretty high, but still low enough to be accessible. The structure of the house itself overall needs to be stronger. That means stronger joints to prevent portion that might be somewhat compromised from pulling down the entire structure and the whole thing falling down like a house of cards. Hurricane resistant design, high seismic design, what's called post disaster design, post disaster structures is a way of designing a house to be much stronger to avoid being crushed or pushed or destroyed by the pressure of the water. You'll want deeper foundations for the water that's rushing along, taking away the top layers of soil will expose more of your foundations. If your foundations are deeper, they'll still be protected and still able to hold up the rest of your house. Backflow prevention valves are devices that sit where your house's sewer system connects to the city sewer system. What this valve does is it prevents overloaded sewer systems from the city from bringing sewage back up into your house. Flood vents or flood ports are little devices that sit in the wall. They are in little openings that normally are closed, but when the water level rises, those ports will pop open and relieve some of the sideways pressure on the foundations. The interior and exterior surfaces of your house should be ones that are easily washed and which can be submerged. The floodwaters are going to be contaminated. They will be carrying toxic chemicals and sewage. You want to be able to wash that off. Drywall, even painted drywall, will soak up the water. It will swell and it will begin to disintegrate. So instead, use surfaces like cement board, aka green board, tile, porcelain tile, ceramic tile, or plaster, or even decorative resin panels. Because the flood water is contaminated with chemicals and with sewage, you really want to be able to wash down your surfaces to really thoroughly spray down the inside faces. Cabinetry is typically made of MDF and HDF, medium density and high density fiberboard or masonite. You want to go for solid wood cabinetry if it's going to be on a level that might be flooded out, that solid wood construction is more likely to survive being wetted. Whereas MDF and HDF, they'll soak up the water and they will be destroyed. Similarly, hollow core wood doors, which is generally what you'll have on the inside of a house, the water will make its way inside and the doors will swell and they will be destroyed. So again, use solid wood doors throughout your house. Just like your wall surfaces need to be washable, your floor surfaces need to be washable. Avoid wood flooring. 
engineered wood flooring, solid wood flooring, laminate wood flooring, avoid carpet. Instead, go for tile, ceramic or porcelain tile, sheet vinyl, or linoleum. Even the concrete itself, you can have a polished surface. Or if you want to spend the extra money, terrazzo is a very lovely finish. To improve the comfort of these floor surfaces, you can place large area rugs that can be moved out of the way if there's an impending flood. Let's summarize the discussion of a flood resistant house. Wet flood proofing allows the house to be submerged without major damage. Avoid a basement. Design a sacrificial open concept ground floor level. Move wiring and equipment five feet off the floor. Use solid wood construction. Use durable washable surfaces for walls and floors. So these are the strategies that you can use and the materials you can use to help your house best survive being flooded. So in this mini series, I've discussed the different causes for floods, the different risks associated with them, how a community can come together and best be prepared, how a household can be best prepared, what you can do on your site, on your landscaping, and the features to use on your house to best keep the water at bay. And if the water does make it inside the house, how to best prepare the house to be part partly submerged. If you'd like to discuss how these strategies, how these concepts can be taken into account on the design of your new house or if you're remodeling an existing house, feel free to get in touch with me by booking a project consultation call from my website.